course, we're talking about the internet, the most powerful invention of all time. Right? The computer was for a while, but the internet way past it. The internet is the neurosphere of Thierry Chardin. It is essentially heading toward a living brain around the planet made up of you. Right? And I don't, you know, the Illuminati may have been out to lunch or something. Uh, the Bilderbergers didn't meet that week, whatever. They let it get by. You know, somebody said it over DARPA, you know, hey, be kind of cool if we could send email to each other. Why don't we set this up? Hey, why don't we let our friends and cousins do that? Oh, I'll tell you what, we can do some business on the net. Let's do that. And you know, the powers of beer over there going, that's pretty good. I'll order filet mignon, give me the, the shrimp on the side. And the next thing you know, they've got a World Wide Web. Oh boy. And the next thing you know, they've got YouTube revolution. Then they've got instant messaging. Then they've got Skype. Right? You know right now there is an Australian who doesn't live anywhere. He moves from country, actually he's kind of like me, only much more money. He moves from country to country, six, four weeks at a time, and he, he moves again. And he operates the whole, his whole operation, which is well funded, with people supporting it around the world, in cyberspace. It has no office. There is no place to go raid, right? No place to break in and steal anything. It's all in cyberspace. Does anybody know who I'm talking about, what I'm talking about? I'm talking about WikiLeaks. W-I-K-I-L-E-A-K-S. It is terrifying world governments because essentially he's created a cyber force that is putting out witness testimony in droves and people know they can go there and they're turning stuff in, they're turning in documents, they're turning in tapes. They're whistleblowing on everybody. And recently, and, and this thing has been building for several years, I'm sure the government's going, what do we do? We kill them? What do we do? I don't know what we're going to do. They could shut down the net. No, that's not good. My daughter will kill me. Whatever. It's like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, a PFC working in intelligence in Iraq slipped them a tape. It was a fully encrypted video of a helicopter shoot down in Iraq. It killed 15 Iraqis, including two Reuters newsmen, and included the whole thing with full audio. And has anybody watched that tape? Okay. Go on the net and watch this tape. Okay. WikiLeaks, it's, they're, trying to, they're trying to shut it down. The governments are trying to, you know, but that's not the way the net works. And so it's now housed too many places. You can watch the tape. It's very disturbing. There's a lot of disturbing stuff out there. The point is, is that WikiLeaks is a major problem. Re fundamentally run by one person with help in multiple countries with no front office, behind the scenes funding, operating purely in cyberspace. And that's just the beginning. You may remember, by the way, you guys are gonna tell me when to go because I just lose myself. Uh, you may remember not too long ago when we had uh, I'm trying to think what, what the, uh, I forget the crisis. We had so many, it's hard to keep up. You know, you go to bed on Monday morning, you wake up, you know, I mean, you go to bed Monday night, Tuesday morning, wake up, the Gulf oil, the Gulf full of oil, right? I mean, it's always something like that. I think it was the, the earthquake in possibly Haiti, but what they did was is they simply went on and said, look, all you have to do on your cell phone is punch in a number and it automatically donates $10 to the Haiti fund. I think it was the Haiti earthquake. They raised huge amount of money in just a, a few hours, right? Boom. Well, you know, think about that. Yeah, you have the ability now to not only talk to three on Skype to, to, to somebody you've never met in, in China or Bangladesh, you have the ability to raise money on the net in unlimited amounts because of the numbers. And so you could have an issue, and you, you could put out some sort of advertisement. Everybody punches, and you, you, you buy a deal with AT&T, assuming they would do it, push a number, donate $10. That's a happy meal, right? Well, say, okay, 10 people do it, you got $100. 1,000 people do it, million, but a million people, 2 million people. Suddenly you got $30 million. Pick your issue. What's your issue? 911? Ding, ding, ding. $30 million. You know what you do with that? You hire a big, big time a lobbying firm with 30 million bucks, basically off to the side, 
and that, those phone calls get returned. And when you go on the O'Reilly show, you don't get laughed off. But we don't do that. You see, the internet is only about 20 years old. And, and as a result, humans have not quite figured out what they were given. They don't realize how powerful it is. It is, it is almost impossible to describe its power. That's how big it is. What it does, let me give you a perfect example. Facebook has now hit 500 million, right? Megan Fox, stunningly beautiful woman. I'm not sure she's the greatest actress. I think she has a high school education. She's become a national worldwide phenomenon. And her fan page has seven and a half million people on it. At any moment, she can send a message to all seven and a half million people. If Megan Fox decided that she wanted to vote her whatever, her, her reputation or her power, to a particular issue, she could go to all seven million and say, send ten, ten bucks. They probably would, seventy million dollars. Again, what's happened is the net has taken all of the regular people and said, if you'll just come together, you can bring down the Roman Empire in a couple of days. You can change the course of history. You can end this institutional abuse. You can stop genocide. There is almost nothing you can't do. But what do we do? We don't do that. What we do is, is create blogs and rail against big pharma and big oil and big nuclear and all the big expensive lobbyists and hope that they'd all go away. But they're not going to go away. When in fact, we could have our own lobbyists. We, we could fund any issue we want to as much money as we want, and it would, it would be $10. But it's the power of the numbers. The internet has opened up everything to large numbers, but the people haven't got it. And one of the reasons they haven't got it, and let me tell you, this is happening, is that the governments of the world are trying very hard to put out a counter message. Don't do that, right? Oh God, don't come together. And, and pull your money to, 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 to deal with an issue that we would rather not deal with. Go away. Sit down and shut up. They put out constant stories about illegal lobbyists and corrupt you know, uh, political action committees and all that stuff until you see it's awful, it's awful. And the very people that are putting out those stories have got five political action committees and seven lobbyists. Why? They want the field to themselves. They don't want you coming together to do anything. There are 42 million people in the United States, roughly, give or take a couple of million, who don't have health care. And for the last 30 years, there's been three or four attempts to try to deal with that, and they've all failed miserably. And the last one failed miserably. It's a terrible law. Guess what? 42 million could, could open up a website on, you know, a couple of groups on Facebook tomorrow, open up a website create a political action committee and each one put ten dollars in and they have they have four hundred and twenty million dollar fund to force the government to deal with health care do they do that no they don't even come close why 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 would they not serve their own interests this is a very interesting thing well guess what in the UFO issue it is the same thing the government has basically said do not fund it do not back it stay away from it ghettoize it let it be. And that's exactly what has happened. Um, what I'm going to do now is skip ahead real fast. That's the secret empire, by the way. I can give you a lot on that. But very quickly, right? Just, just a taste. Does that look familiar? Just a taste of what the post-disclosure world means, right? First and foremost, the government's sitting on technology. This is becoming a cliche, but they've got technology from E.T. Kraft. We've got enough evidence to confirm this. We know they have the craft. We know they're working on it. We know they have their own uh, anti-gravitic propulsion craft. Some of the stuff you see flying up is ours. And so for 60 years, they've been spending many billions of dollars to study the propulsion and energy physics of E.T. vehicles, and they have made substantial progress. And how much of that technology is available to you and your fellow human beings to address the human condition? Zero. Nothing. Why? Because in order to bring that tech out, they have to end the truth embargo, and they're not ready to do it. And so consequently, every day that goes by, 
every new person that dies from the uh, additives in gasoline, the additives in oil, from the pollution in the air, every animal that dies from an oil spill, and on and on and on is one more unnecessary death because the truth embargo could not be ended and that tech had to be sequestered. The price is piling up big time, right? The cost of energy is killing millions of people. It is starting wars. It is creating terrorism. And the nature of carbon fuels is polluting the entire planet. We know that now. They've had the replacement for it very possible, or at least the basis to replace it, given additional help, maybe for 30 or 40 years. Do you want to put a price tag on that? It is exactly analogous to the United States government in its bio laboratories coming up with a near foolproof cure for cancer in 1967, curing 80% of all cancers with a 95% cure rate, and keeping that sequestered for national security reasons and not allowing it to be available to any health operations in the world. It's exactly analogous to that. And of course, it's a bit awkward and a public relations problem because they're going to be asked about that, you know? You know, gee, why didn't you tell us about that cure to cancer 30 years ago? Could you kind of just give us an explanation for that? And nobody wants to be the one to give that explanation. So you see the political dynamics here, you see the problem. This is what we're dealing with. Disclosure gives us that technology, and a lot of good things can start happening. Anti-gravitic propulsion, I could go on all day about that. They know we have that, right? Have you heard about the nuclear waste problem? You know how many piles of nuclear waste there are around the world? You don't want to know. You want to know how they do it. You want to know how rusted the drums are. You don't want to know the security. You don't know what happens if somebody blows up one of them. You just don't want to know. You do probably want to know that they've spent several, many billions, tens of billions of dollars digging a hole in Yucca Mountain to stick it all in, but it's never going to go there because nobody's going to let it go through their state.